Alright, hello, hello to all. I'm here today in the tier 6 German premium aircraft carrier, uh, kind of on the eve or the end tail rather of COTS. Uh, in the premium German aircraft carrier, the Eric Lonard. We're here today on the map Haven. It's standard battle, sadly, so it's going to be a bit of a rough one, but we're in 5 to 7 matchmaking, so we are mid tier. Now, with the upcoming patch 1.5, the Eric Lowenhart is one of the premium ships that is going to be removed from the shop for uh, its general performance characteristics. And just uh, off the top, I'm just going to let you know that this is an incredibly powerful tier 6 carrier. Now, the tier 6 carrier lineup is pretty interesting. In the tech tree, made up of the Weather, uh, Ranger, Ryujo, and the Furious. Of those, the most powerful of those is the Japanese Ryujo, uh, by my reckoning anyhow. Followed closely by... I would say Ranger is in pretty comfortable second for the Tech Tree Carriers. And then the Furious and Wetzer are both kind of more specialized and as such suffer somewhat. Now the Lowenheart is relatively analogous to her Tech Tree counterpart the Wetzer. Uh, she too has AP rockets that you can see me using here. Slightly different um, armament on these Messerschmitts, however. So it's the same aircraft, more or less, with a couple of different characteristics. Performance, you can see me ricocheting off that angled destroyer there. These are very much meant to be used against uh, cruisers that you can sit at all. Now they can be used against destroyers and battleships in a pinch. You can see him turning quite violently. So he's going to be dodging most of the damage there, just showing off, however, that. Not particularly effective, uh, these armaments are versus these destroyers getting two overprints. However, the rockets on the Lowenheart, which are on a fairly small squadron size, you can see only nine rockets total and nine of every aircraft, indeed, of every um, in my hangar, uh, which makes them relatively fragile. Those rockets, however, are tier eight rockets, the same ones carried on the Augustus uh, von Parsifal that you see at tier 8. So it's a much more powerful rocket. You don't launch as many as the Parsifal since it's still a 2 by 3 squadron, so 2 planes in attack flight. But in exchange, you do get that tier 8 alpha. Now I'm flying over with the dive bombers. As you can see, they are incredibly fast, and they are in fact the only German carrier at the moment, which has the Ju-87. So now these two do have this circular reticle you can see me using, which gets quite precise. Only then one bomb on that Kotovsky there. Uh, but this, unlike the Tech Tree German carriers and unlike the pre Tier 8 Premium, the Graf Zeppelin, carry a high explosive bomb. Now this is a German high explosive bomb with 12,000 alpha, as you see me with a strike there, which allows them to be quite dangerous versus the um, standard light targets that you will be attacking. So they are more suited for attacking destroyers than your rockets or indeed your torpedoes. Torpedoes also carried by the JU-87Cs, however you'll note the torpedo bombers are substantially slower. This is due to of course captain skills as well as just the base speed of the aircraft type. Furious coming in on my Miyoko here, just gonna pop a fighter, dissuade him a little. Tier 6 fighters are of course very small radius and there's nothing special about these particular Lowenheart fighters other than the fact that they are German so they have that reduced detectability. The torpedo payload carried by the Lone Hearts torpedo bombers is fairly mediocre. You can see they're very slow at 34 knots. They have do have a long range of 6 kilometers though you typically don't use most of the range on your torpedoes. And they have a rather pathetic alpha of 4200. Now this is still better than the I believe 3.3 alpha that you find on the Wesser herself. Uh, but it's definitely not particularly good to work with. This Bajoni, for example, can make a good 36 knots, which means he's going to very easily be able to dodge these torpedoes. You can see they don't uh, get particularly tight either. Now, as German aircraft, these aircraft are relatively squishy. You can see that 4200 Alpha preventing me from actually killing him. These are squishy aircraft, no particularly special reticle tightening features here. He's in the turn here, so I should be able to catch him if I'm lucky. Oh, nope, he just dies. Instead, that's quite fine. But really, the standouts on this carrier are the bombers and the rockets. Hopefully, I'll be able to find a cruiser to demonstrate the rockets on later, but uh, we'll jump back onto the dive bombers as this game evolves. 
Now, as I mentioned, it's a 12,000 damage HE bomb, which kind of sounds ridiculous. It's more than the midway bombers, by the way. But unlike the midway, which drops six bombs at once, this only drops two in a, that rather small, precise reticle. Two pretty good targets here, tier fives with low AA. As I mentioned, pretty squishy tier six aircraft. However, they are extremely fast. They do have that normal German dive bombing pattern, so they do have that high altitude bombing pattern. I'm gonna go for an attack on the Frutak here just to demonstrate just how precise I can get it. Hopefully this time I don't flub the aim, and you can see that surgical reticle means I can attack from any direction and still get some pretty good hits, getting those two bomb hits there for a substantial amount of damage as I swoop down onto this Vispy. Now normally a Vispy is fairly difficult of a target to hit for uh, even most bombers, but a fair lead. You can see that relatively precise reticle allows me to almost get a precision bombing run on that Vispy, quickly dispatching him. Now do note that in spite of the fact that the bombs are incredibly powerful, you are only dropping two of them, so even with this small reticle, which is relatively controllable, you still do will get some variants, and frequently you only hit one out of two bombs even on a relatively large target, such as this Furutaka. Coming in on the Furutaka with those AP rockets, the Parsival rockets, as I mentioned, he's angled slightly, so don't expect to get Citadels necessarily on first strike, but we will see. Uh, you can see that powerful 2300 alpha. There's a York over there, and now we want to find our broadsides. Not sure if I can get that York broadside, but there is also an Abruzzi here, who appears to be moving quite slowly. Now, like all German carriers, he gets, uh, we get the extra uh, charge on our engine cooling consumable, so that's that boost bar. Aim for the midsection a little high here, I think, and as a result, we're not going to get the results we want, but that's quite alright. Helena and Abruzzi over there, so I don't really want to attack that. The planes are, as I mentioned, fragile in spite of their high speed. However, the Helena does get dispatched by my teammates, which means I can now attack that. Now, proceed. Now, your first few hits on most targets should deal 4,000-ish damage per bomb, just a little over that. Uh, but as targets saturate, because these are high explosive bombs, as you damage, as their sections of the ship get damaged by high explosive armaments, uh, you will see lower numbers. So just be aware that if you see your bombs hitting for less than 4,000 damage per strike, this is because of saturation. This is one of the weaknesses of high explosive bombs, but it's kind of like the price you pay for having access to these precision bombers. Do I to drop a fighter? Get my two bombers off there. I'm gonna see if I can use the speed of these planes to try and evade that fighter. Just drop these ditch. Remember my reserves are fairly small and though my regeneration times are not terrible, uh, they are above average. Lone Sharnhorse in the north, but I'm not under too much threat. I'm gonna just spot him out for my allies. You can see he's quite distant, so as a result, has gone dark when he's not firing. Pushing my hull North, which by the way is an extremely fast hull. This standard battle is well fast evolving in the way that many standard battles do. Just a piecemeal slaughter. Looks like he's behind cover. Now I do have fairly long arming distances. You can see that piece of rock there. Let's see if we can get something in to this cover and keep him lit nevertheless. Now this is costing me some opportunity to attack by being this far up. Just gonna see if I can hit him in the nose. Looks like he turned in to face my teammates, so at the very least I can root him out. The torpedo bombers, as I mentioned, not particularly important to this particular kit. Advancing forward with my 36 knot hull, you will note I am spotted and broadside to the York. I don't have too much of a citadel, I do have German turtleback. Um, however, that does not mean that I'm immune to damage and definitely this hull will take large sums of damage, there's no particular heavy armor plates that you might find on a tier 8 British carrier, giving some fair lead. Let that reticle tighten, and there's a bit of hang time, you will note, but as you can see that precise reticle allowing me to get some easy hits in and score a fire. The bombs, in addition to their 12,000 alpha, do have that insane 69% fire chance, reaching 211 knots as we soar onto this Abruzzi here, with its relatively mediocre AA. He's pretty stalled out, so let's see what we can do. You can see that circular reticle allowing me to approach from any angle, which again is convenient, but do note that in spite of that seemingly high 
amount of damage that it delivers per strike, we're only sitting at 36,000, not exactly the highest numbers. Furious did drop a fighter there, so I'm going to try and preserve my rocket squadrons. See if that Abritzi is still beached. He's under a fighter. Just circling to try and get a good look. Looks like he's managed to get off the rock, potentially. There's that Furious over there. Uh, by the way, the rockets are actually quite potent against most tier 6 carriers, which have fairly exposed citadels other than, well, yourself in the Lowenheart and the Wesser, which is on a hipper hull, which is has a turtle back. Looks like he's going to be turning in. Do need to get that nice flat broadside. Not able to do so. Maneuvering through a fighter. It should be on the end of its lifespan, however. And let's see if we can get a cleaner hit than last time onto this Abruzzi, which does have a fairly raised citadel. And you can see there that four citadel strike for 10,000 very easily, um, allowing me to deal chunk damage. So that is where a large sum of your damage is going to be from in many cases. Enemy Furious is running. Plenty of enemy ships left. My team not doing so hot in this standard battle at the moment. And I'm going to harass this Abritzi, which we just citadeled with these bombs. That circular reticle allowing us to attack from basically any direction. Scoring a fire again with that 69% fire chance. Circling around. You can see the turning circle is fairly tight. Do have standard rearming time. He didn't damage control parties. Let's see if we can get a double bomb strike with that circular reticle in this case. And there's two bombs and a disabling hit. Don't need to go after him any further. He's going to burn out. So our next target is going to be this Dunkirk. Sadly, we're going to have to reach for the torpedo bombers, which are not very good. He does take out to a Helena strike, and we're just going to go for the heavy targets first. Now, in spite, as, uh, in spite of having these HE bombs, which can deal some pretty heavy damage versus destroyers, uh, this is, in the end, a German carrier. So the heavy armaments of your bombs, which can mostly well are used to inflict fires, are usually what you want to go for. I'm going to start on either the Dunkirk or the Furious at this period. Mahan fleeing after, I guess, dumping out a torpedo load onto the Furious. Gonna keep him safe by putting a fighter here. Now, I don't want to drop one on him even though there's a fighter attacking him right now because, well, that's not gonna do very much for him. That strike is basically over at this point. Now, my Helena is approaching, and so because I cannot guarantee a carrier kill because of that cap fighter, the combat air patrol fighter, which defends the carrier hull, and because the Dunkirk is approaching my Helena and Mahan, uh, I'm gonna just start on him, see if he can get some dot damage. He does pop his Dunkirk fighter, which should keep him safe, but I don't really care about these torpedo bombers, so even though normally I'd leave him unmolested, that fast Dunkirk, by the way, dodging one of my torpedoes, because one, they were a bit uh, under or over lead, and two, or under lead, sorry. And two, they are, as I said, incredibly slow. Just gonna ditch them here. Hopefully we can score a flood, though the flood chance is not very good. You can see my cap is currently being taken, so we're gonna have to do something about that. There's a Minsk in my cap, an incredibly fast uh, Russian destroyer. You can see he just now popped his smoke, so I'm gonna have some difficulty rooting him out. Oh, he's passing through the cap. And you can see that circular reticle means that I will be able to harass him quite readily. You can see even unaimed, it is fairly tricky reticle. There's another ship in the cap, so I guess there's two destroyers, but I'm concerned about the Minsk first. So we are going to start on him. Now, the secondaries on the Lowenheart are actually fairly potent. Not nearly as potent as the... Okay, I kind of flubbed that again, so just be careful about the aiming time. It's been a little bit since I played too much low and hard, uh, in spite of her incredible power. You can see that high angle aim. If you want to arm early versus destroyers, give them lead, let them fall into the bombs. But you can see the precise reticle can be can have its weaknesses here in this case. Now I'm pretty close. But my secondaries only engage at 5.3 kilometers. Don't really have this thing specced out for secondaries. We'll see if I can convince him to attack my hull. Gonna absorb some damage with that 50 
or lift at 36 knot hull. Trying to get a good lead here, get another bomb hit. Turning full broadside to him, he only has 4 kilometer torpedoes because he is a Minsk. That's why I'm willing to take this engagement. And my secondaries are, as I said, quite potent. He'll trade off some damage, but mostly we're here to go after him with the dive bombers. Just wait right over. Unfortunately, the bombs are a bit too precise. He just now got into torpedo range, so I'm not too concerned. Secondaries continuing to engage. You can see the Lowenheart has quite a few secondaries. Gaeta is also in the cap, but got to worry about myself first. Use that lead time. Score sufficient damage, and now we have to go back for the cap zone. People asking me to defend the base when my hull is under attack, don't really like that. Need to be careful though, because the Dunkirk could very well attack me. Now, I'm not guaranteed to hit the Gaeta, but we are going to try and pop a fighter when the Bayern is up. Now, failing to find the Gaeta early enough means that I'm just going to have to hit the Bayern, go for those first few reset points there, and follow up thereafter. You can see the relatively fast planes allowing me to get some hits in one bomb there, even on that battleship sized target. The Bayern, uh, sorry, the Gaeta is going to smoke up in this case, but not too much I can do about that. I can only attack one particular target at this time, which does not happen to be the Gaeta. Really do need the Itel Frederick to help me out here. Looks like that fire got put out, but the Itel managed to put another fire on. One bomb, but even with the large penetration power of 68 millimeters, if you hit turret faces, well, you're gonna get a shatter, unfortunately. You can see my damage slowly climbing over the course of this match as I begun to attack those battleships. Forced to turn over to the torpedo bombers, but I cannot reset the Gaeta. So probably this will end up in a loss, unfortunately. Gonna try and get my reset points out onto the Dun Dunkirk. You will note the Itel is not in position to hit the Dunkirk more than likely, so hopefully this guy has some cap points and I can get some quick resets off onto him. I'm gonna have to rely on Okay, that guy just got reset. I'm gonna have to rely on the uh, Prince Itel to potentially hit a torpedo. Okay, I found the Gaeta. I only have torpedoes here, remember? I do get a reset on the Itel, or onto the um, Byron, rather. So I'm really just going for a reset here. 34 knot torpedoes, however, unlike the Tech Tree Wesser, are not good against destroyers. So hopefully those hit. If they miss, uh, then well. We're gonna not get the reset and we're gonna lose. Okay, looks like we did potentially get a reset there. Just boosting full tilt at 211 knots uh, toward this Gaeta. Hopefully those ships can keep getting reset. I just have to desperately get on to the Gaeta. We do force the Gaeta from the cap circle. And now I'm in a pretty precarious spot. Don't really want to be here. But we forced the Gaeta from the cap, that's all I care about. And now we can shred these ships. I still do have rockets, but remember those are AP rockets, not exactly ideal. Looks like this battleship is turning in, this Bayern. And here we have some ideal circumstances for the 6km torpedoes. Pretty predictable traverse. Let's see if he full turns into it. Looks like he's a bit slower than I anticipated. Even so slow as to dodge those 34 knot torpedoes. I'm gonna just hope that the Dunkirk, um, or rather my Prince Itel can help me with that, but the Dun Prince Itel is actually dead, so I'm gonna have to kill him myself, looks like. So oddly enough, the Bayern is now uh, out of my field of fire, as in he cannot hit me with his own shells. However, it is only 45 seconds left on the clock, and it looks like my Helena somehow managed to secure the cap from the enemy team, which means this is going to end up in a rather goofy win, even though 
I myself could definitely have performed better in these circumstances. Anyhow, uh, still 91,000 damage is nothing to scoff at. Still some definitely decent, decent damage scores. Over 7 torpedo hits, 18 bomb hits, 9 incapacitations, 3 kills, 8 fires, 6 citadels, 5 defender ribbons, 5 secondary target hits, 8 spotted ribbons, and 25 rocket hits. Not too much damage from the rockets, just the one good salvo on the Abruzzi there, but still some pretty decent showings. 1919 on the base experience. And if we go to the detail report wise, you can see a nice even distribution, but you can see the vast majority of the damage coming from my main battery, which is well aircraft. So 85,000 of the 91,000, and a tiny bit of fire damage here. Secondary shells contributing 2,000 damage to that uh, Minsk, which did attack my hull. You can improve the hull to have slightly better self defense characteristics. Uh, the Lowen Heart does, in fact, potentially have the room in her captain build for you to take uh, some skills to extend her secondary range if you really want to, especially since the German carriers, uh, particularly the German tech tree carriers, do not particularly require you to spec into some of the skills. Uh, but I will continue on that later. So 48,000 bombs. The bombs which should contribute the vast majority of your damage over the course of a game. With that 69% fire chance, you can get some pretty good fires out of them if you permafire a battleship. Uh, of course, in this case, you saw me go after many cruisers with the bombs, which is why uh, my fire damage is not particularly high. 21,000 under torpedoes. You can have more or less. The torpedoes, however, as I said, are not particularly special. And the rockets... And when I do hit, are going to hit very hard. You can see I only did 15,000 damage to the rockets. Uh, the first hits with those rockets onto that Gaeta at the beginning of the match were not particularly effective, as you saw. But then eventually, when I started getting hits onto the Furutaka, um, the Furutaka got finished off by four rockets, which really um, overkilled him. You can see him taking two full penetration bomb hits there for 8,000, 4,000 damage in a piece, as I mentioned. But that the Brutzi, on the other hand, uh, with only the 14 or so rocks that hit him, most of them ricocheted, but that one good strike that we did inflict dealt 10,000 damage with those 2,350 alpha rockets. Dunkirk as well just taking mostly torpedo damage, you can see 5 torpedoes for 14,000. Just shy of 15,000 damage, just about 3,000 damage per torpedo, not exactly great, especially considering torpedo bulges at this tier are not very good. Anyhow, popping back into port after that <laughs> rather interesting game. Definitely could have done better that game myself. First off, this is the Lone Heart. Rather stubby hull, as I said. So survivability-wise, 44,000 HP and 16% torpedo bulge. So actually fairly durable for a tier 6 carrier. However, armor plate-wise, nothing special in terms of armor. So you will be taking damage from all sorts of ships. 21mm deck will protect you from destroyer high explosive, but the sides are only 20 so unfortunately, even though the deck shatters HE, the sides of your ship do not, so you will be taking large sums of damage. If I strip away the armor, however, you can see the Citadel is rather small and is basically waterline, and just above the waterline, sorry. You can see, however, it is protected by a soft turtle back, which will protect you from taking Citadels from close quarters. So only at long ranges will you be able to Citadel the Lowenheart, so all in all, a fairly German design but nothing particularly special, so try to keep yourself out of the way. Uh, Concealment-wise, with a Concealment Expert Captain, 13.1, so fairly respectable, not nearly as large as that of the Ranger, but not nearly as small as that of the Ryujo's, I believe, sub 10 kilometer detection. The Ryujo is, however, much more lightly armored. In addition, she does 35.8 knots, I believe this is with the speed flag, if I'm not mistaken. She has a fairly speedy hull, this isn't without the speed flag, so you can reach speeds of up to 37.6 knots with the speed flag equipped. So definitely something you can do there, a very, very fast hull. And as you can see, she's not actually that large, about the size of a small battleship or large cruiser, uh, similar to the Wester, which is based off of a hipper hull, which is a fairly large cruiser. So this is a fairly rapid paced hull, which allows you to reposition very aggressively within the game, which is definitely a boon. Now I am running a secondary flag. The base range of her secondaries is only about 5 kilometers, 5.2 as you can see here. Uh, but she does have a fairly potent battery. Now if we look here, her battery is mainly on the right side of the ship. This is because she has an asymmetrical layout as a carrier. Her island is on the right side, so 
most of our superstructure is on the right. So you have those 105s here. I'm going to take off this camo because it makes it hard to see what the Lowen Heart actually looks like in terms of hull form. So this is her default perma camo. Nice grays, blacks, and whites of German nature. So you have the German 105s with 25 millimeters of penetration, more or less, or 26 rather, which allows you to penetrate battleships at the tier as long as they're not tier 8. So there's five of these. Three on toward the rear half of the ship, and two towards the bow. This is this rather stubby bow. But in addition, inside of her uh, hull form, she has these casemate-mounted 150mm or 6-inch guns. Now these 150s do have significantly more penetration due to the German quarter penetration formula. Just about, uh, I believe, 37 millimeters of penetration. They, too, only have 5 kilometers of range. Uh, however, there are eight of them in total, or eight twins in total, eight per side. You can see them mounted in these sponsons, if I can get the camera to focus properly. Two forward, in a pair, and two aft. You will note that they have relatively restricted firing angles, however. They cannot move very well. So unless you're flat broadside, you're very rarely going to be able to get all guns to fire. Your typical firing angle for best possible results is to the rear and to the right. So uh, where I am right here, sitting in my seat right now, this is where you want to place the enemy. So if you're fleeing from the enemy, you want to place the enemy ship toward the direction of that crane that you see here in the distance. And that will allow now, uh, hopefully one of these guns to fire, but not necessarily one of these forward 105s. But that should allow um, all three of your rearward facing 105s to fire, as well as both of the twin 150s in the rear. And potentially as they close alongside your berth, they may ex get exposed to more broadside. As you saw there, not too much uh, I could do against that Minsk. With the secondaries, I really did just kill him with the bombs. The secondaries were more for deterrence than anything, unlike the Graf Zeppelin, which has incredibly powerful secondaries. Uh, the Lomanheart secondaries are good, but not fantastic. Now I'm taking the... So for modules, before we go on to the captain build, slots 1 and 2 are fairly obvious. There's only two, one aircraft upgrade in each slot, so for those two slots, you just take the aircraft upgrade, aircraft engines mod 1, and aircraft groups modification 1. In slot 3, however, you have some options. If you want to spec towards the secondaries, you can't extend the range, so taking the secondary battery modification 1 will bring the base range out from 5 kilometers to 6 kilometers. I personally am opting for that 5% torpedo speed because, as I mentioned during the commentary, these torpedoes carried by the Lone Heart are incredibly slow, and you can no longer take torpedo acceleration in the captain tree. They do, I believe, 33 knots base, so I'm getting just a knot of speed off that. So if you feel that's not particularly useful, which to be honest is not, you can definitely spec toward another module. Now, uh, the torpedo bomber's aim time is actually pretty good, especially considering you have a fairly long aim time. Uh, but also with the AP rockets, sometimes if you want to arm your AP rockets from a further range, the extra two seconds on attack aircraft modification one can be very good. That is in fact the mod I take on my Manfred von Richthofen, which has extremely powerful rockets, uh, just like the Lowenhardt. The Lowenhardt, you might not feel the rockets as much just because of that two by three setup, but they are definitely very powerful and worth upgrading. So it's kind of up to you. I'm currently just going to stick with my one knot of torpedo speed, but do note that I don't particularly think it's optimal, it's just what I'm running at the moment. And last but not least, your bombers are definitely your most powerful squadron. Only that 19,000 hit points, this is fully upgraded, and this is still fairly fragile for a, a high altitude dive bomber like the German JU-87C, which has to get right over its target with that 12,200 delivery. So I opt to put my HP into the dive bombers, but if you really want to, you can put your HP into the torpedo bombers or attack aircraft. I do not recommend the torpedo bombers, however, because of the aforementioned low alpha damage and low speed, which kind of makes them relatively ineffective. You saw me at the end in that game there, kind of completely whiffed that drop onto the Gaida. He probably just simply kept sailing straight forward and dodged the torpedoes. Didn't have time to look at the strike in case I did have to make another attack, but thankfully the Helena that was capping the enemy base did end the match. But my recommendation here is you put the HP toward the bombers with bombers modification too. Now for my captain, you did see my a couple of captain skills proc a couple of times. That's because I'm running Gunther Luchens, who is my MVR captain. Uh, this is not what I would call an optimal MVR captain, and not definitely an optimal Eric Lowenhart captain. But nevertheless, a very standard carrier build. So the first point should go for air supremacy. The second point should go for improved engines. Third, 
uh, point should go towards aircraft armor, six points total, and then survivability expert. That's your nine point core build, and then you can do whatever you want from there. Now, pretty much every German carrier in the game, except for the exception of the Graf Zeppelin, so if as long as you're not sharing a captain with the Graf Zeppelin, every carrier that's German in the game has very, very powerful dive bombers. So, after your nine points, you should definitely go for bomber flight control, get that extra 5% move speed to the cruising speed of the bombers, get them up to that 211 maximum cruise, uh, cruising knots, or maximum boosted speed, rather. Improving your speed in this game reduces the time that you spend in AA, which allows your relatively fragile planes to get onto the target and get out earlier, which reduces the damage they take as well. It reduces the time that you're flying toward your target, uh, which also increases the damage you will deal overall in a match. Now do note that I have site stabilization on this captain, however the nerfed site stabilization, uh, this is after the captain reworks, uh, the new site stabilization no longer gives a 15% aiming time to a dive bomber, it only gives 7.5, uh, which to be honest is not really worth it. I'd really rather get some of these one pointers instead. So my recommendation instead is that you take something else. Now the Lowenheart does have HE bombs, which have 69% base fire chance. However, it does not have HE rockets, which makes Demolition Expert unideal. Uh, so probably what I would probably put the points towards is this enhanced armor piercing ammunition. It's only 3% for HP bombs and AP rockets. The Lowenheart only has rockets. Uh, but if you do plan on sharing this captain with a German carrier, then of course the German carriers have AP bombs and AP rockets So in the tech tree, so they will benefit fully. So that's probably where I'd put those points there. If you're building a dedicated Lowenheart captain, no need for that, however, and you can spec towards some other, uh, other things, such as close quarters expert. which will extend your range out another 20%. That's one kilometer each. So five kilometer base range plus secondary module gives you six kilometers, plus the skill can give you up to roughly eight kilometers. So you'll be just a bit over eight uh, kilometers, probably around eight and a half, since you can also put on that 5% uh, secondary flag on your hull. But really the Lowenheart only needs the nine base points plus the four points here and you can spend the rest of the points wherever you want. I do like having Last Gasp, she has small squadrons, and you can, Luchin's also has access to his improved engine boost which just uh, increases the boost duration which is also very nice to take, so taking all three of these one pointers to contribute to your plane speed is good as well. Um, you will note that I have the repair specialist here, but that's just because this is for the MBR and German tech tree carriers in general, which will have access to the heal. As a tier 6 carrier, the Lowenheart not, does not yet have access to the heal, but is nevertheless a very powerful damage over time carrier. You can definitely go towards this secondary armament expert if you really want to, just because the Lowenheart has so many spare points. Now if I want to compare it to my Graf Zeppelin commander, this is my Graf Zeppelin captain, so do note that, again, she has access to a heal as a tier 8 carrier, so you don't need to take that. And she's taking the torpedo skill because her torpedoes are better than the dive bombers. But simply put, uh, if you want, you can shift this 4 points over to the dive bombers. And then this is a 20 point captain, so we actually have 3 points left over. So this 3 points could be spent towards either your AP rockets, or you can, can shift this heal repair specialist over to the secondary skill, and we have one point left over, take the improved engines and last gasp. That'd be a fairly standard Lowenheart captain in my eyes. So just to reiterate, if you want a specific Lowenheart captain, uh, just let me see if I can pull a captain over just to illustrate exactly what, so in a way that you can see more easily. So let me go back to my Lowenheart. Let's see if we have a spare 19 point captain. So let's just borrow my uh, my Franz von Jutland over here. So you take your base 9 points, it's air supremacy, improved engines, aircraft armor, and survivability expert. Then you take your bomb upgrade over here. And now we're left to play around with whatever we want. Now I was using Luchin, so we do have the improved engine boost, but priority wise, Probably, if I want to play around my secondaries here, close quarters expert. And now we have two points left to do note, but this is a 19 point captain, so I'd probably go here and here, improved engine boost duration, and last gasp, and I would spend the last two points here on secondaries. Uh, if you don't want the secondaries, it's just 10% uh, reload time anyway, which doesn't always proc, 
you can always go for torpedo bomber arming distance get shorten that arming distance get them a little better they are pretty crappy torpedoes but nevertheless uh, they can be useful uh, you can also compensate for that 5% missing torpedo speed uh, that you're taking out of the modules to run that secondary build and get it back over here with swift fish like so and this would be a fairly standard Lowenheart build. Uh, now I'm just going to continue rocking my captain. I haven't bothered respecking my Luchins at the moment. But that's just mainly because uh, I'm just waiting for a respec. Don't really want to spend the elite captain experience this close to a clan battle session. But I guess what I can do for you guys today is I can just set this here. Thanks to the new captain system. I can just borrow Franz von Eulen here, not going to have those Luchin skills, the uh, Luchin skills by the way, if I just pull him onto my Manfred for carriers. So Luchin does have the benefit of having aerial equipment experts, so after hitting a number of ships a number of times, in this case 30 times of aerial armaments, you get a servicing time increase of min uh, servicing time improvement of minus 10%, which is obviously quite beneficial. The Lowenheart does have fairly long servicing times, it's only 68 seconds on the rockets, but you can see 85 and 80 on the bombers and torpedo bombers is definitely above average. Anyhow, with that said, I'm going to throw her back into another match in the matchmaker just so we can show off a little more consistency. This time we're running the speed flag as well, so we're gonna be quite fast. This is gonna be an, end up being this is going to end up being a longer commentary, but we did have quite the unexpectedly exciting game last time, so hopefully we can get something that's not standard battle. Let me just grab this container over here and we'll head right back into it. Hopefully matchmaker does not chew me out for waiting so long and throws me into a match in fairly short order. Lots of carriers in the matchmaking. So hopefully we can get something done. Now Loneheart, as I iterated early on in the commentary, is going to be going away at 1.5, and of the two German premium carriers available in the game, between herself and the Graf Zeppelin, which is not leaving the store by the way, she is definitely the more powerful. The Graf Zeppelin does definitely have her niche as a secondary focused carrier. But overall, most of her armaments outside of her torpedo bombers are relatively weak. The torpedo bombers on the Graf Zeppelin being the standout for being not kind of trash. Whereas the uh, Eric Lonehart actually has two fantastic squadrons and a fairly usable, if not stellar, torpedo bomber squadron as we pop into the queue right here. So I would definitely recommend the Lonehart over the uh, Graf Zeppelin, just on the basis of it being a superior carrier by default. So we're in a fairly small game here with double carriers on both sides, so looks like we're on 5. So we're missing one player, normally it's 12v12, this is an 11v11 with two tier 6 carriers and we are topped here, so this should be interesting. I uh, do note there's a Kamikaze R, which I'm going to try my best to hunt down in this matchup because Kamikazes are disgusting. Now the two carriers are a Wesser and a Lowenheart, as I mentioned earlier, the AP rockets can definitely hurt non-German carriers quite a bit, but the enemy has two German carriers, so I'm not going to be able to make use of that. Plenty of low-tier cruisers here, which is an environment in which the Eric Lowenhardt excels. These AP rockets should be extremely deadly. So as I mentioned, 2300 alpha, four rockets in, on each aircraft, and if you look, um, the 2 by 3 setup means you're launching 8 rockets, so you can be dealing upwards of 16,000 damage to a low-tier cruiser if you can slam all those rockets into the Citadel space which makes the Lowenheart incredibly powerful. I'm going to start moving my hull already, as I mentioned, 37 knots at the moment with the speed flag on the Lowenheart, which allows you to reposition very aggressively. Small map on Fault 9 Domination, but there's really nothing that can contest us. Uh, the problem with low tiers, or mid tiers rather, is that none of the ships really have too potent AA. If you remember the Tier 6 clan battle season, uh, definitely not the prettiest. The Leander won't have a fighter plane, so I'm just going to swoop out of his mid-range for a bit. Get right onto the side, he does not appear to be responding. Now once you do acquire the firing solution, try to hold her steady. Aim for the citadel space. Only one citadel there, but only one citadel is still worth 5,000 damage. 
relatively fragile rocket aircraft. Gonna try for the Citadel space again. That Marblehead did launch a fighter, so I'm not interested in that. You can see the orbits are fairly short. Give him a bit better lead this time. And another 5,000 there, and his quick, easy 10,000 damage shaved away Farragut over there. Kamikaze are on the far side. Gonna focus on that Farragut who is smoked up. Stay on my side, I guess, in this situation. Lander ducking and dodging, but still not too able to avoid that damage. So just 13 rockets impacting for a quick 10,000. That's already one ninth of the damage we dealt over the course of the entire match last time. Definitely off to a much more rapid pace start now that we are a top tier carrier versus uh, many low tier cruisers. Bombs, as we mentioned, 12,000 alpha. We have not yet done any saturation. That guy's healed. The Marblehead popped a fighter earlier. So while he doesn't have his fighter, might as well make a strike here. Relatively thin profile on these low tier cruisers. But the precise bombing of the Lowenheart does allow us to score some quick and easy damage. Flying very briefly over the Congo, tier 5 battleship with fairly poor AA, but remember my aircraft are fairly fragile as I mentioned. Bringing the reticle over with a slight lead. And with that circular reticle, we can give him a nice quick and easy lead, score an easy fire with that 69% fire chance, and we can follow right back up, avoiding the torpedo bombers for as long as possible. Because we don't really want to be making use of that 4000 alpha, 4000 torpedo alpha is kind of terrible to be quite honest, and the torpedoes are slow and sluggish. So I really don't want to be doing that. You can see, even though we don't have luchins, the regeneration times are still fairly competent, Wesser continuing to attack with AP rockets, so he should look for a lightly armored cruiser like my Emerald over there. Marblehead should be right in front of me. And there he is. He's turning away already, so I'm not going to get a great strike here unless he declines to continue turning. Marblehead so thinly armored that I'm able to score some easy citadels. Pop one of those engine cooling consumables at this point. He's turning away. He's turning south towards his base, which is why I turn in. Don't fight the turn of the enemy ship. You really definitely have to treat these rockets kind of like torpedo bombers in that you want to get that appropriate lineup. You can see the planes are quite maneuverable, but he's resisting my damage, which is fair. I am trying for his life, after all. And you can see any angling will reduce that damage from 9,000 right there on the first strike to just about zero on the second. Slowing down the pace of our damage here, Devonshire attacking this Leander, exchanging torpedoes. Looks like those are a miss, however, so hopefully we can get him out of there, but he looks to be in a bit of trouble attacking with my dive bombers at this point. A single penetrating hit should be enough. He's on fire. So no dice there. Farragut in the smoke. I'm gonna see if I can swoop on. So you can see that Marblehead at 4,900. I have an alpha damage of about 8,000. Farragut pops up. We'll go back for him th afterward. Pop my engine cooling here just to get a more clean exit out of the AA zone. Only one bomb there, but he is pretty much crippled and out of the match for now gonna move toward the cap as my team secures it. Finally, launching the torpedo bombers, mainly to give my other squadrons a reprieve. We could launch the rockets again, but the Marblehead's not at a great angle, and he's pretty low anyway, so no need to really reach for that high alpha damage rocket. Looks like my team is doing a good job on the other side, trading some kills. We do lose that Devonshire, unfortunately. Congo pretty exposed. Still, like all carriers, we want to look for those exposed targets. Where possible fighter over there. But there should be plenty of room to maneuver. If we can find the Marblehead, we will attempt to finish him off with these low damage torpedoes. Don't really care what I use or what I hit with them. Just want to make sure I give my squadron some time to cycle. You can see our continued taxing of our dive bombers has reduced our reserves to briefly there. 6 out of 9 and now 8 out of 9. So still another 80 seconds before we get that last fighter back. The Congo is an extremely rapid paced low tier battleship, more of a battle cruiser than anything. She does about 30 knots stock. With flags, she can do about 31. You can see she's fighting my turn and 
It's only her large size and relatively poor turning circle which allows me to hit that first torpedo for basically about 2,000-3,000 points of damage. Didn't find the um, didn't find the Marblehead, unfortunately. She's in the middle of a turn. Battleships can't abort their turns that easily. There's a fighter over this guy. Looks like he's turning in, however. So we're going to just arm over there and see what we can do. We're now kind of in front of the Farragut. See if we can find him with our detectability radius. So we see a smokescreen, so we don't necessarily know if he's in that smokescreen, however. So we're going to fly over. And you see that detected ribbon coming up, telling me that my planes are spotted. This, of course, tells me that the Farragut cannot be in his smoke because there's no other allied ships nearby. So if he was in his smoke, he would not be able to fire upon us. And you can see... And, and he wouldn't be able to see us, more importantly. So you can see that I knew he was in his smoke. He's circling. Lead the bomb. And one quick hit for 4,000, which doesn't seem like that much. Uh, I need to be careful with my hull at this point. <laughs> that 4,000 damage doesn't seem like that much, but you have to remember he's a 11,000 HP Farragut, so that's a third of his health right there. Looks like I got a bit too close, only an incapacitation over there. 13.1 km ejection radius. He is at 12 km, more or less. And the rockets are unsuitable against a battleship like the Britannia, so I am going to have to bring in my torpedo bombers, uh, whether I like it or not. So I don't have to push so aggressively into this cap. Definitely maybe a little overzealous here, considering I only have one Britannia with me as well, who is uh, at the back. Mr. Bacon Bits over there, reluctant to push, and I don't necessarily blame him. Let's see if we can harass this Farragut. Just 9 out of 9 bombers right now on my hangar deck, but just need to let them cycle back. Let's push this Britannia away. You can see those planes are substantially slower. Britannia, unlike the Congo, a fairly slow moving battleship. Pull out and away. You can see him pulling down toward the border, just like that marble head earlier. So we don't want to fight the turn, as I've mentioned many times. We want to follow the ship into the turn, so if he continues to turn outward like this, we're going to circle down and around. Let him pull away. If he holds his angle, that's fine as well. Have a pretty good hit onto that Wesser if I wanted to, which I may indeed take, mainly because the uh, Britannia is not offering a very good amount of broadside. This Wesser looks to be fairly static, and remember, I have 6 kilometers of range, on these torpedoes, fairly long running distance, so I can actually afford to just pop them over there, keep, keep out of the short range AA for as long as possible. Enemy team is starting to kind of cut up my team, who is hunting that Kamikaze R to no avail. I still have to work on this Farragut, however. You can see that two torpedo strikes with the slow moving torpedoes eventually meeting their mark. There's that Farragut, AA coming up. Really want to defend that B cap. You can see him slowing down, but with my fairly precise bombs, should be able to score a hit in theory. No dice there. Gonna hunt for the kamikaze on the way at this point. Now these guys have seeded the space beneath the cap, so at this period I'm gonna push forward and try and continue away. There's that low HP marble head as well. Uh, which I am going to consider taking out. Hopefully they can just shoot him when he's spotted, but I'm really looking for the Kamikaze R. You should theoretically be stalking my uh, teammates about 8 kilometers out from them. So I'm going to just zoom 8 kilometers ish away from the Emile Bertin, based on his last known position, and there he goes. There he is. Just based on the expected behavior, we can find... The destroyer, fairly precise bomb hit, allows an easy frag, and that's the very dangerous Kamikaze R dispatched over there. Only two bombers left, but last gasp, which I mentioned as a great skill, which I did not have on my previous captain build, allowing me to swoop over. This guy has a fighter up, but hopefully we can get this strike off first. My planes are very fast, just make sure you get the bombs off, and that's a quick two kills to clean up. Six bombers still aboard. This is definitely my best squadron as we pull in toward uh, the sea cap. Looks like Farragut's still in the smoke. You can see the tracers coming out of the smoke screen. That gives us all the information we need to know. Gonna harass this Britannia. 
with this full dive bomber squadron, make use of that 69% fire chance to hopefully get some results. 700 points to 372. I've secured the more vulnerable targets, or more important targets like that annoying Kamikaze R, which was going to continually harass my ships over on that border over there. So now I can leisurely attack the ships that are much closer to me. Two bomb hits there, 5,000 damage. You will note instead of the expected 8,000, telling me that the uh, Britannia is in fact quite saturated at this point on his hull. Getting another lead in. This guy might get a fighter, but I don't really care. Fighter or not, I'm gonna attack this. Uh, probably with my torpedo bombers. Bring my carrier to a full stop just on the edge of the cap, launching my planes. Using my hull, my own cap patrol fighter to defend against these low and hard torpedo bombers. Not that he particularly should care about losing torpedo bombers either. No ticking damage means that I do not, in fact, have a ticking fire, which means this Britannia has damage control partied. This means, or should mean, that I should be able to attack. Now, this Farragut is now attacking the central B cap, but I no longer care because we are taking his C cap. So as long as we maintain a cap advantage, I don't particularly mind, no matter what happens. Uh, what happens. Fighter patrol does tag, unfortunately. Two torpedo strikes. And no dice. There's a low HP Lowenheart, which is tempting. How many planes do I have? I have six. Don't need six to attack a Lowenheart. Let's see if we can score a carrier frag. He's circling away. Push through. 5.2 kilometer long range German AA. He dies. Two bombers left here. Relatively unsaturated Westerholm. A quick swooping strike. Two bomb hits for 4,000. He's fairly saturated as well, taking half damage from those bomb strikes. But my Mitsuki should be able to dispatch him. Mitsuki guns are kind of terrible, but at that range, he's not going to be missing torpedoes. And we're going to clean up another match with a quick 72,000. Uh, not nearly as stress inducing. As the last match, and you will see that when you're top tier, your damage numbers will probably be a little lower on average, but definitely doing our job there to clean up a quick victory. Secondary battery, uh, I got more focused on with this captain, as I mentioned, but as you saw, the secondary battery does not often come into play at all. Six torpedo hits, 12 bomb hits, four planes shot down by hull, five by fighter, two incapacitations, two kills, four fires, six citadels, fourteen spotting ribbons, one assisted capture, twenty-two rocket hits. And again sitting quite comfortably at the top of the scoreboard with a substantially lower base experience however because of the nature of being top tier nevertheless. Some excellent acquittal. You can see again torpedo bombers de-emphasized a little more rocket damage this time especially because of the low tier cruisers that were around but really just again focusing on those dive bombers which is why you want to have that captain build which focuses on your dive bombers even if you have something very similar to your Graf Zeppelin which should be focused on her torpedo bombers. So again just before we go this is the captain build I ran for this uh, particular commentary and this is the captain build I believe you generally should go for if you're building a captain exclusively for your Lowenheart which you can't because of the new captain system after the captain rework. Uh, last two points would go toward arming distance for me, but if you really want, you can put them toward the secondaries. It does not really matter. And yeah, that'll be that. Two not-so-quick matches in the Eric Lowenhardt. Uh, she will be leaving once more, as I said, in patch 1.5. So if you're looking for a German captain trainer and you like the German carriers, this is definitely a different take on the German carrier model, and I highly encourage you to... Uh, consider picking one up if you're looking to spend a moderate amount of money since tier 6 premiums, well, being relatively inexpensive, are also relatively comparatively inefficient uh, economy earners, but definitely a fantastic ship that uh, definitely deserves to be removed as she is, because she is somewhat broken in inexperienced hands. Anyhow, uh, I hope you enjoyed those two quick games in the Lone Heart, and I will catch you all later. Cheers.